he was still very young and found himself in a desperate situation when three armed men came banging at his door making threats for they wanted to throw him out of his home just like that with no alternative presented. The young man pictures himself ending up in the gutter and in the cold and he didn't know how to survive and felt miserable, betrayed and lost. And in this hopeless state of mind he heard the violent cop shouting at the other side, taking fully advantage of the situation, crushing a helpless human being and it's this, the aggressive cop laughed so much about his job because he'd feel big and invincible and it didn't matter to him throwing a living being out in the cold as long as he got a kick out of it and anyway someone else's pain wasn't his after all and he the cop would sleep in a warm bed anyway and nothing could happen to him well that's what he thought the young man begged them to go away to leave him alone and have mercy they didn't and continued to ham on the door making threats then in utter despair inflict, inflicted upon him through the ruthless and armed man at the other side of the door the young man had himself all other solutions cut off by the by the offenders at the other side who were consciously violating one of the main human rights that all human beings must have a roof over their heads and a bed or at least to have one provided otherwise and they had him always cut off as a cornered rat not being able to think clear anymore due to the emotional stress and pressure by the threats shouts and hammering at the door the young man grabbed his 9 mil army gun of the Swiss militia and shot a couple of rounds at the door still hoping they would go away and leave him in peace thus the dangerous aggressive cop Hans Rudolf Kuni which means the brave one in German from the Teutonic word Kuhn he would not sleep in his bed anymore receiving the agony he enjoyed so much to inflict upon others from the wrong end of a gun himself this time one year later the young man got sentenced to 20 years in prison for killing a cop and seriously wounding another as if it was him who went to the cops looking for trouble and not the other way around the state's attorney even demanded life for murder so you can see the whole story so there they are I mean he looks like the victim and, 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 and this one looks like the uh, the offender <laughs> you know it's like they exchanged the pictures no well, they didn't you know this is the offender I mean look at him and this is the victim and as it was in fact anything else but premeditated murder the young man applied for an appeal at the Supreme Supreme Court and it was this the criminal local Nazi court and their local Bernese Nazi police had to prevent at all costs because Roger Fankhauser would have finally be freed by a European court after having served a couple of years because of the severe mitigating circumstances of organized premeditated state's terror on a single human being So they found the young man dead in his prison cell just after Christmas 2013 on December 30th and they say he just died all by himself of natural causes. In the newspaper they emphasized repeatedly on the fact that it was no suicide as previously loads of prisoners had been suicided in mysterious ways in the Swiss prisons. As I've pointed out in my videos, 
and written about in international newspapers. So now they have them die of natural causes because normally the natural death cases don't make it into the newspaper and all those suicides over the past years got a bit conspicuous. So just in time for his appeal case for the Supreme Court they had him natural caused if you know what I mean. A completely healthy young man of just 37 years just died away mysteriously shortly before his appeal case in an era in which science has made everything possible including a silent inconspicuous convenient death. And these crime cops came to arrest me again only a few days earlier on Tuesday December 17th 2013 at 16.30 30 hours to which I refused as my baby daughter and young children were there and one of them was ill. Now realizing they probably saved my life that day just before Roger Fankhauser was found dead in his prison cell. The Swiss are very capable of killing an entire family if they have to. Well if that happens or if I would die of some natural causes in a prison cell or, in a, or a police station then you know it is not true. By any means the Swiss prevent any immigrant cases against the Swiss state and human rights cases to be extended to a Supreme Court or even worse for Switzerland a European or international court. This way they can apply their dictatorship laws, never lose any cases, continue to murder and terrorize hidden behind the Swiss Nazi laws of silence and keep the picture of a clean, honest and neutral country to the outside. And we all know now what the outcome of the autopsy of the young man will be considering the recent manipulations of some Swiss laboratories who claimed that Yasir Arafat was poisoned by a polonium radioactive poison in order to stir up the Middle East. Whereas all other international labs of France and Russia revealed this Swiss trickery of their laboratories. On January 6, 2014 the Swiss National Bank in Zurich stated that they had made a loss of almost 10 billion dollars. That's uh, 10,000 million uh, dollars. Now that was the bank I filmed with all those Swiss reptilians on it. So that's a huge amount of money. And uh, thanks to Obama he did it. For which other presidents got JFK'd for. JFK. So in the near future we will see some more unpredictable acts of this alpine base of evil and I hope the NSA will be there to keep an eye on him. So we can see how Snowden he got assigned in Geneva well we all know it but he got pulled over by the by Oxygen I tell you. It has all to do with the Swiss banks and the IRS that's what it's about. So dear Russians, just, uh, just throw him out this guy. He's working for the Swiss banks, the snow job. Yeah, so this was in the uh, so this was this year. The young man was found dead in the high security prison which I filmed a couple of times. Which is only a few miles away from where the violent cop dead died. Where the other cops and relatives live and in the same area of the court and everyone else involved. So I guess his tragic fate was just a matter of time. Even the pictures in the newspapers clearly show 
who the victim is and who the aggressor and both are dead now so the cop below well, he looks like the aggressor like we, we see the uh, comparison of pictures normally like in a newspaper and the guy uh, above well he looks like the victim and actually he was you know it's so clear isn't it so here we can even read it under the victim it says he is the offender because you know the picture shows so obviously he's not the offender I mean look at him look at this guy he's not the offender but you know the newspapers wants us to make to, to make us think this way and under this guy here and look at his black eyes uh, it says he's the victim no way he's the victim look at him and these strange black eyes can be seen a lot in Switzerland as the grey eminence uh, François Junou and uh, user uh, Marino Delfino he enhanced it which I'll show you now I already showed it it was a uh, it was a possessed guy like you know it, it's a very dangerous and aggressive and corrupt cop very dangerous and his own aggression cost him his life so here user Marino Delfino enhanced these black creepy eyes of the aggressive and corrupt dangerous cop and uh, these black eyes can be seen a lot in Switzerland as Octogon's grey Nazi eminence of Octogon François Junot displays them and um, well I mean this guy was extremely dangerous I mean I mean look look in his eyes he's even shape-shifting and he knew Hitler he was a personal friend of Hitler and of Amin al Husseini. Also, ah, after the war, when uh, Mr. Ulrich Wille, the other grey eminence, so he took over the position. He uh, started because the Germans were afraid, were just tired of, of wars and, and, and all that, and bloodshed. Bloodshed. So they, um, well, they, they, they found the Arabs to do the, the dirt, or some of them, not all of them, of course, and infiltrated Islam. And um, look at his eyes, black, like a black hole, just like the aggressive cop. And um, I, I put my life in danger talking about it, but because they will probably send the police again, because uh, you're not allowed to have your own opinion here in Switzerland. So maybe, maybe my, the expert Marino Delfino and some others can... Um, can enhance this better and do a real good close-up of this I mean this, this is evil we're talking about guys so let's have a look at them again With this extremely dangerous Swissy and um, these guys stand above the law they control the police they I mean together with the other ones you know uh, they sit in the justice department and they get the 100% uh, support of the of the Swiss population. I think later on here you can see him like what we call what people call shape shifting. You see that like when he turns around. I'm not an expert in this. I you know I, I don't really know, but uh, look now it's coming. Extremely dangerous people. So here in Switzerland, you know, they put the innocent in prison, and the big criminals and bankers, they've got nothing to fear, absolutely nothing. The grey eminence of Octogon. It is. He knew Himmler, he knew them all personally so this cop with the uh, strange black eyes 
This was the same cop who had been aggressing people before, as he has aggressed me in 2011. And there are three witnesses, which can be seen on YouTube. He lied things together on command on the police car's telephone that day to put me in prison. So I understood perfectly well what was going on and haven't left the house alone anymore since almost three years now. And this is going on for 16 years. The Swiss authorities are a murderous organization who don't stop before murder, torture, terror and corruption in their encrusted beliefs of Swiss super superiority over immigrants and all other people with these with this SVP Swiss People's Party drive behind and support of the entire Swiss population. And as it is not allowed by the Swiss laws of silence for an immigrant to have his own opinions other than what the Swiss allow you to, they will most probably send their Nazi authorities again to come and arrest me for telling the truth. Switzerland wishes to hide away all proofs and inconveniences at all cost. I hope that one day there will be an honest international inquiry where an independent delegation will look into these files and organized crimes of Switzerland. The Swiss a people united in crime who as all criminals do wipe off their fingerprints by all possible means, whether it be assassination, terror, lies, intimidation, or any other Swiss means of very organized violence. Dear Roger, I made this film so your tormented soul may rest in peace, and at least some people will remember the real story, and hopefully one day the truth will prevail. I'm so sorry for the pain and injustice they inflicted upon you. You will be remembered.